Be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. That's Moses' law. No. In Galatians, the whole... The, have you even read Galatians, Michael Pearl? <laughs> Hey everyone, so I uh, wanted to do a response video to a pastor and uh, his take on a verse from James and how uh, someone was asking him a question about if they should keep any laws from the Old Testament. I believe, if I remember correctly, that's what he was saying, but uh, his response is interesting and that's why I wanted to do this video. So uh, let me know in the comments what you think about it as well and uh, let me bring him on right now and we'll get to responding. Question number 32. Here I am, Michael Pearl, sitting at the door, answering your Bible questions. What is the perfect law of liberty referenced in James 1.25? Is okay, first, let's look at the perfect law of liberty. Where is James getting this precedence for a perfect law of liberty from? Well, let's look at it right here, okay? So... Psalm 19, 7 says, The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. This word in the Hebrew, law, is Torah. It means the instructions, okay? Doctrine. And so the instructions of Yahweh is perfect, converting the soul. And so James is not just making up his own terms here okay he's 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 bringing the precedence from the scriptures that there is a perfect law and this is what we get from the scriptures from psalm from david he says that the law of the lord is perfect okay related to the old testament law john john i fear you've gotten mixed up with the judaizers you need to get my series here on youtube free uh, on judaizers or i forgot what i called it Do you remember what i called that Judaizers. He's <laughs> yeah, I got a, a series on Judaizers. It's something about Judaizers. You remember what that's called? Judaizers, it's called. <laughs> surprise, surprise. And so does the law that James is referring to have anything to do with the laws in the Old Testament? Is, the, is what he's uh, bringing out here is about the answer. And so, you know, let's see what he has to say. Says, all right, James 1, 21, here's your answer. Therefore, lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness and receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your souls and be ye doers of the word, not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. If any man be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his face in a natural glass goes his way straight away, forgetteth what manner of man he was. Whosoever looketh into the, here's his question, perfect law of liberty and continuing therein, he should be not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work. This man shall be blessed in his deed. So I have in front of me this passage, which I copied off my computer, and I have underlined, or highlighted actually, in verse 21, engrafted word, verse 22, Word, doers of the word, verse 23, hearers of the word, and then verse 25, the perfect law of liberty, whosoever looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continuing therein. Okay, just before he talks about what this word is, I want to take a look at what the engrafted word is, the implanted word, in other words, okay? So, again, going back to the psalm, Psalm 119, verse 11, your word I have hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. He's saying, I'm going to implant your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. That's what David's saying. So again, when James is referring to the implanted word, what is he talking about? He's talking about the Torah. He's talking about the instructions of the Most High. Okay? Law of liberty is the word of God. It's the Bible. Mm -hmm. it, is, it is the Bible that reveals to you that gospel of Jesus Christ. So he's okay. So you can see he's kind of uncomfortable. He's in a he's he's in front of an audience, so he's like he has to dance around this question. What is the what is the the the, the word that he's telling us to do? It's it's the, it's the, it's the Bible. It's the, it's just the Bible. 
it's the Bible that tells you about the gospel. And so he totally danced around that answer that, oh, what is, what is James telling me that I should be a doer of and not just a hearer? The Torah, the instructions of God. When you hear the instructions of God, don't just hear them, but do them, right? And it's interesting because James also says that your faith without works is dead, right? And he uses Abraham as an example. And what did he do? He followed the instructions of the Father. And so, again, this is why I wanted to show you this is because he's just kind of dancing around. He's not, he doesn't want to give you a, an actual biblical definition because it would go against his whole Judaizer series that tells you not to obey the instructions of the Father, which is keeping the seventh-day Sabbath, observing the dietary instructions, the festivals. But I, let's, let's let him continue on here and explain his position a little bit better. He said, look into it. Open your Bible and look into that Word of God. Now, he says, be ye doers of the Word. Again, he that doeth the Word. Again, doers of the work. He changed it. Doeth the Word, doeth the Word, doeth of the work. So looking into the law of liberty results in doing the work. This man shall be blessed in his deed. Now, we want to look up law of liberty and see how else it's used in the Bible, especially in the New Testament. We also want to look up the word liberty and see how it's used in respect to the gospel of Jesus Christ. What we want to know particularly is, does the term liberty, is it ever used in connection with the law? His question was, is the law of liberty, the law, Moses' law, that's about as far as you could get from Moses' law. Uh, so, no, we never find liberty used with the law. You sure about that? You sure about that? Is that true? Because Psalm 119, verse 44 through 45 says, So shall I keep your law continually forever and ever, and I will walk at liberty, for I seek your precepts. Interesting. So, Michael Pearl says that the law, specifically the law of Moses, and David doesn't have any other definition of the law in his mind when he's writing this. It never is used with the word freedom. That's what he just said. And so this is why you got to test every preacher to the word of God every single time. And this is what this is what people have expected their audience to do for centuries, is to not actually go back to their Bible and look at the definitions of the words and make sure they're they're lining up with what the pastor is trying to teach. It's amazing. Opposite. Find we, in fact, we found the word bondage, bondage, bondage used in reference to Moses' law. Liberty is used only in reference to the gospel of Jesus Christ and the words of God. You see how it's interesting that this is what most modern day preachers do is they, they make the gospel out to be something that frees you from the bondage of the law, as in the having to obey the instructions of the Lord is what actually is the bondage. It's interesting because Jesus himself said that if you sin, you're a slave to sin. And a slave does not have a place in the Father's house forever. But if, So if the Son sets you free, you are free indeed, right? A son abides forever. And so when you become a son of God, you, you walk in the way your Father w wants you to. And how does he want us to do that? In his instructions, his behavior. He said in Psalm 103 that I, I gave my ways to Moses, right? I've made, you made your ways known to Moses, your acts to the children of Israel. These are his ways. His instructions are his ways. So it's, it's only fitting that the son, like Jesus did, would walk into his instructions and his ways, right? But uh, another passage I wanted to read also, because he said in the New Testament, let's look at what liberty means in the New Testament. You've got to be careful of this gospel presentation of, yes, Jesus frees you from having to obey the commandments, which is what he's, he's peddling here, this narrative that's been peddled for centuries. But let's look at another verse here that you've got to be careful of because he's, telling, he's, he's instructing you how to walk right now and he's trying to instruct you away from the commandments is what he's doing. And so we have a warning from the scriptures. 2 Peter 2.19, While they promised them liberty, they themselves are slaves of corruption. For by whom a person is overcome, by him also he is brought into bondage. And so Peter's warning, listen, there's people out there who are going to be selling you a message of freedom, but it's not actually freedom, it's bringing you in bondage, in slavery. 
And so I believe what Jesus says. If I sin, that's what brings me into bondage. Walking away from the commandments brings me in bondage. But doing what the Father wants me to do, keeping the commandments, brings freedom. And that's why David said, I will walk at liberty for I seek your precepts. Okay, That's what we should be doing. We should be practicing the Father's commandments and looking and seeking them out. James 4.10, for whosoever shall keep the whole law offended in one point is guilty of all. For he that said, do not commit adultery, also said, do not kill, do not commit adultery. If thou kill, thou art become a transgressor of the law. So speak ye and do ye as they that shall be judged by not that law, but the law of liberty. So the Old Testament law brings damnation. If you break it in one point, you're guilty of all. Yeah. Yeah which is why we need a, a high priest to atone for our sins, because if we break the commandments, we are violating his law, and we are committing crimes against the Most High, and we need a mediator between us and God to reconcile us. That's why we have been given the ministry of reconciliation, right? To, to call others to repentance, to be reconciled to God before the judgment day. And this is how you do it. You, you, you repent from not keeping the commandments to wanting to practice his behavior, okay? <laughs> walking in the commandments and what he refers to as the Old Testament law that brings death, or is he saying that commit, actually doing what the commandments say, you shall not commit adultery or you shall not lie, you shall not steal, actually doing the opposite is what brings life? That is not what the Father has taught us in his word. It's just so interesting. So he said, don't live like that. Live as a person to be judged by the law of liberty. Uh, Galatians 5, 1, stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free. Be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. That's Moses' law. No. In Galatians, the whole... The, have you even read Galatians, Michael Pearl? <laughs> The whole book of Galatians is talking about a, a gospel presentation that was being presented to the Galatians by this party referred to as the circumcision because they had taken the, the law and uh, perverted it and saying that you have to do this, you have to be circumcised specifically in order to be forgiven by God. That was a perversion of the gospel. And if they would have obeyed that, which it sounds like they were, right? Uh, they had been bewitched by these people coming in, spying out their liberty that they had freely walking the commandments because they had gratitude towards the Most High. They're going to walk out the commandments. Instead, these men came in and wanted to bring them into bondage and say, no, 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 unless you listen to us and do what we say, which is get circumcised by our group, you're actually not forgiven. No, 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 yeah, you believe in Jesus, we do too, but you have to do this in order to actually be grafted in to the people of Israel, be part of his people. And so that's what brings bondage, right? In Galatians... This is why Paul says, As we have said before, so now I say again, if anyone preaches any other gospel to you than what you have received, let him be accursed. What they were preaching was a different gospel saying, this is how you get forgiveness. You got to get circumcised by us and be in our group. For do I now persuade men or God? Or do I seek to please men? For if I still pleased men, I would not be a bondservant of Christ. And see, this is what it means to be a bondservant of Christ, is that you don't want to, you don't seek to please men, right? I, I want to be in your group, so therefore I'm, I, I fear man and what he's telling me that I should do in order to be forgiven. Don't do that. Do what, the, do what the word of God says. Do what the scriptures are telling you to do. Don't listen to men and what they're saying, like this man that we're listening to right now. Don't listen to what he's saying, because he's trying to make you afraid to keep the commandments of God. And you've got to test them by the word. That's like the Ten Commandments. That's like the Sabbath keeping, tithing. That's like keeping feast days and holy days and blowing trumpets and trying to say Yahweh and Johanna instead of Jesus and John. Uh, that's wearing little kipper things on your hat and strings on your underwear. All of that stuff is playing Jewish and has, is falling from grace. You need to get my series on the uh, book of Galatians and what did I call that series? Uh, uh, maybe that was Judaizers. Yeah, it's all Judaizers. <laughs> So saying the Tetragrammaton, which is the name of God that he revealed to, to Moses, Yahweh, or Yahweh, some people say it differently. I'm not gonna, it's not a big deal, right? I'm not a name Nazi. But 
why is that bondage? It's the tra you know the translators of the of the Bibles where they actually hid his name and just inserted Lord. They just provided freedom for their readers because you don't want to be using the name of God that he revealed. When he went on Mount Sinai, he brought bondage to Moses by telling him his name. It's such an interesting perspective. It really is. And if you want to obey uh, Numbers 15, where he actually gives the example, if someone wants to consider his Sabbath day a matter of personal opinion, a personal preference, then God actually instituted the death sentence Okay, on the man who, who just wanted to do whatever he wanted on the Sabbath, regardless of what God said. And then he institutes what's called the zitzit. Okay, the, the little tassels that he's talking about that I wear, uh, it shows that we remember always the, the commandments of the Lord, right? It's a reminder to us that we are his. And uh, so it's not, it's not a, a Jewish thing per, per se, because I'm, I don't even think he's defining what that word means. We won't get into it today, but it doesn't, it doesn't just mean a, 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 uh, a type of way, right? Uh, these are the ways of the father, not the ways of the Jews. He, he, he gave it to the 12 tribes of Israel. One of them is the tribe of Judah, which is where you get the term Jew from, okay? And so there's other tribes of the nation of Israel. Um, and so if you are one of God's people, you're grafted into the people of Israel. And so he says this commandment to wear zizits are for all the people of Israel, okay? And so is the Sabbath, so are the feast days. Uh, the, the, the little hats he was talking about, that's, that's just Jewish tradition, that's not, that has nothing to do with the commandments of God, okay? And so, he's just, he has no idea what he's even saying. That's what I'm getting from this. Two, part my, my take message on the book of Galatians. Uh, Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty, be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. He says, uh, Galatians 5, 13, brethren, you are called under liberty, only use not your liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another. Uh, Galatians 2, 4, he said they came in unaware trying to spy out our liberty which we have in Jesus Christ. That, that These are Judaizers came in to spy out our liberty that might bring us into bondage. That was some people that came into the church and said, I, I notice you people worship on Sunday instead of Saturday. Don't you think you ought to be keeping the Sabbath? I notice you're not keeping the Yom Kippur or Sucketh or anything. I don't, don't you think maybe you ought to be doing that? Uh, and so they're spying out the liberty, trying to steer people into the practices of Judaism. Oh, boy. So bondage is used nine times in the Bible, and it always has to do with the law. Wrong. That's the word the Bible attaches to the law, bondage. So that answers that question. Uh. <laughs> No, Mr. Pearl, that does not answer that question. And uh, uh, you are very much confusing people, and you're confused yourself. And so I, I would ask that you go back and look at the engrafted word, the Bible, and go back and look at these verses that clearly tell us that we need to be obeying the instructions of the Father. Okay? So, hey, I uh, I really hope this... this uh, video was helpful to you and if it was if it was go ahead and share it and make sure you subscribe to this channel i'm going to be planning to do more of these videos uh, hopefully time provides that we, i've been pretty busy with a lot of things and and possibly some things coming up to announce concerning the the channel um, so stay tuned for that and again I, I hope you see that what this man is teaching is completely unbiblical and you really go back and consider what he's saying, all right? So, hey, have a good one.